Good morning. Let's jump right into it. Today's trivia question. What 1960s TV series pilot inadvertently featured a flag at half mass in honor of the assassination of John F. Kennedy? So, I hope everyone's doing well. You know, this is a really interesting time, and as I've been discussing in the past, I try to get away from it to some degree. So, we're not dealing with, um, well, for lack of a better way of saying it, doom and gloom. But I really do want to take issues head on in ways and things that I think are important. So, to begin today, I want to discuss the hypocrisy that exists within the liberal perspective. So we shouldn't connect liberal with liberty. That's like um, connecting democracy with Democrats. Just because they have similar roots does not mean they stand for the same things. For example, if you weren't aware of this, uh, Abraham Lincoln was the president that actually uh, is acknowledged with freeing the slaves and he was a Republican. So there's a lot of conversation as to whether Republicans and Democrats have swapped uh, positions since the Republican Party, or what was called the GOP, good old party, began back in the 19th century. Some people say that around the early 60s, what was once the GOP or Republican Party swapped to being the Democrat Party. And there's a lot of things behind uh, Lincoln's decision to uh, create the Emancip Emancipation Proclamation. I'm sure he believed it was wrong, but I think overwhelmingly one of the influences he had was that there was division between the states, uh, the southern and the northern states. It was a lot of economic impact. The North was not a producing side of the country. Agriculture was a huge aspect of the economy back then, still is today, but it's not. But now we have a more balanced in some aspects because technology is so significant. But the North was not generally an agriculturally friendly uh, side of the country because of temperatures, climate. So the South produced a lot. And as a result of slave labor that occurred and indentured servants, essentially slaves, they were making a lot more money. And it was impacting the North's ability on an economic level. So um, that was sort of a little precursor. Although I do think there's something interesting to share. A little fun fact that I didn't get to share last week. Um, on the evening that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, he signed the Secret Service into existence. Don't you, don't you wish he had done that about a week a week prior and had Secret Service assigned to him. Um, also, another fun fact that I didn't get to share last week that was about evening events. The night that Martin Luther King was assassinated, he reportedly had a pillow fight in his hotel room. I mean, if you're gonna have some fun, you might as well have a pillow fight. 
Nothing wrong with a control fight. I'm gonna assume he won. At least I hope the guy got back. Um, he deserved a lot better than what happened to him, too. In a way, Martin Luther King was, and Abraham Lincoln were signs of people who really wanted to create equality. And they didn't want to unbalance scales where one was better than the other. And they paid their lives for it. As I said before, one of um, Lincoln's lines, uh, which relates to Martin Luther King in his own way, was he paid the last full measure of devotion. So, um, anyways, we're going to talk about what the liberal um, media and the liberal side of things. So, roughly about four years ago, when Mitt Romney was the nominee for the Republican Party and uh, Barack Obama was seeking re-election. They were just about to prepare for the debates and Bill O'Reilly from Fox News and Jon Stewart, who many people know from The Daily Show, had a debate in the what they called was the big rumble in the air conditioned arena or something like that. And believe it or not, if you go back and look at it on YouTube, you could see how they were still discussing illegal immigration, the employment uh, nightmares that were going on, uh, Obamacare. Well, it's actually, it's actually not called Obamacare. That's like a slang. It's actually called the Affordable Care Act. But they were discussing that. Um, Obamacare is what a lot of people have sort of nicknamed it because he's the one who's the one who brought it in. Billy Clinton had brought it in because it was called Clinton Care or whatever else. But it happened to be Obama. Mitt Romney was had tried to do a similar thing, or I think he actually did do a similar thing when he was the governor. Um, so it's not exclusive, these, this concept of social medicine or one-payer health care. It's not exclusive to the Democrat Party, uh, but I'm getting off tangent. So you see that a lot of those issues were very similar back then. And we're still discussing them today, which obviously means these are talking points. And sometimes they're improved, sometimes they're not. Most recently, they have not been. And I would like people to look back and remember that back in the 90s, Bill Clinton was talking about re really enforcing immigration laws. He was talking about how illegal immigration was out of control in the whole thing. And now they stand on the opposite side of it. So don't believe everything you hear when one side tells you one thing and then roughly 20 years later they've changed their mind on it. And they were still talking about it 20 years ago. But now they've just changed their side of it. But anyways, um, John Stewart and Bill O'Reilly were conducting a debate and it's, and they talked about people paying in to Medicare to, and helping people and the whole thing. And uh, how people don't have jobs and we need to improve jobs for people in America. And it occurred to me, being someone who believes in capitalism, um, because I believe if you succeed at what you do, uh, then you should be paid for it. And yes, I agree, it's disproportionate. So in other words, I don't necessarily think that actors who are making, you know, movies 
or even studios should be making hundreds of millions of dollars and teachers work for less than 50,000 in most cases. I don't believe in that. From a perspective of liberty though, and freedom, I'm not gonna tell you what they, I'm, I don't believe we should come down and say, okay, well, filmmakers can't make this much and teachers have to make this much. I think that comes down to a society making a determination and the people of that society showing good conscience should dictate that by not going to expensive movies, refusing to pay expensive ticket prices, um, not supporting that more than they do education. I think the last report I heard, we were like 31st in the country or the world on education. 31st. That's ridiculously bad. That means we're somewhere in the bottom of the one-sixth of the world on education. So, John Stewart is a liberal and believes that we should help each other and that there should be income distribution, meaning that there shouldn't be as many poor people as there are, and as few rich people as there are. And what I found fascinating was why Bill Riley didn't, Bill O'Reilly did not say to him, hey John, how much did you make last year? Because John Stewart, like Bill O'Reilly, makes millions of dollars a year. His networks that, or uh, cable networks, that show his, that, that showcase his shows at the time, made millions of dollars a year. So if it had been Bill O'Reilly, would have said, so John, how much did you make last year? And I'm sure that's something that would be relatively easy to find. And he goes, hey Bill, um, let's see, I'm gonna pull a number out of the air. You made $10 million last year. If you really wanna help people, and you really believe in income distribution, why don't you take, let's say, $9.5 million of that, pay your taxes after that. Let's say you have 10 million after taxes. Take $9.5 million of that and go give it to people that are living in poverty or in homeless shelters. Give 10,000 to everybody that you can within that amount. And if he comes back and says, well, that's not gonna help them, they need jobs. That's like, okay, create jobs with that $9.5 million that you made a year last year after taxes. Create jobs for those people within your organization. Because the reality is they really don't want income distribution um, or equal income distribution. It's really just a talking point. This guy right now who's talking about, um, I can't pronounce his name, so I won't attempt to, but the uh, second string quarterback who is talking about social injustice for black people. Well, that guy made $120 million recently. So after he pays his, he paid his taxes on that, let's just say be nice, he had 75 million left. Instead of living in a mansion, because he's just a human being, why does he go, excuse me, spend a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, go buy himself a cash house somewhere in the burbs, have a dog, a girlfriend, a cat or whatever, keep 500,000 of it for, for that year, well that's comfortable, or even $500,000 for a year for the term of the contract. I would put him in the, I don't know, $2.5 million range, and then take the rest of it and create jobs for people. 
because the reality is, he's all talk. A lot of these people are all talk. Now, if they came back at Bill O'Reilly or someone like me and said, well, why don't you do that? Well, my perspective would be, I'm not the one who wants it. I want people to get what they work for. So if someone watching this wants to make, wants, let's just take the trivia example for, as an example. You put in the effort, you watch the video, you get the answer, you submit the answer. Now, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but it's the effort that gets you the reward. That's how you succeed. You put in the effort and you get the rewards for it. Does it always pay off? No. But when it does pay off, you should be able to reap the benefits of it. And so I don't know why no one brings this up to these hypocritical people who could easily be creating hundreds of thousands of jobs by just not making as much money. The Clintons are worth two hundred million dollars on average. Let's be friendly and say cash value is about 50 million. Well, no, I don't think that's fair because they have more than that. Their, their 200 million is not based on cash. It's based on property and uh, other aspects of financial investments. Let's just say they liquidated everything and they had $75 million. And that's, I think, being very generous on my part. We're very, um, I'm underestimating on that. And they just lived in a nice house. You know, they don't pay for Secret Service, right? We do. Taxpayers pay for Secret Service for them for the rest of their lives. They also get a pension once they leave the White House. Every year, for the rest of their lives, and so are their widows. It doesn't stop. So, George W. Bush has been receiving a, a yearly pension. I don't know if it's between, it's between two and, two and 300,000. I think it might be a little bit more now, but every year. So since he left, the White House in 2009 officially when Barack Obama took over he's had eight years worth of pension so anywhere between 1.6 and 2.4 million dollars in payout but it doesn't stop with him Clinton's been out of the White House since 2001. He's been getting that pension. And it's not set at what the pension was when he left. It continues to grow, even though people on Social Security haven't had a raise in three years. But they get their increase. Do you think that's right? Do you think that shows a sign that people who actually give a damn about people? No, it really doesn't. It's just all talk. So when you want to put restrictions on immigration level, and we have 94 million people within our country, legal citizens, residents, either natural born or because they became citizens as a result of the effort to legally migrate. Here. Those people are paying for these people, for the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, Carter. Carter's been out of the White House for what? Is it 40 years or something now? He's still getting a pension, you do that, right? Every year he gets a pension for being out of the White House. I think it's ridiculous that these people, after they leave their job, the taxpayers pay for, for, for secret service, for, for security for them, and on top of it, they get a pension. They get health care. 
I've never left any job and gotten, continue gotten pay, to get paid. I don't think that it's right that they do. Back in the day, working in government was not this money-making prolific thing. It was a requirement. You had to serve your community, the people who were doing the best within the community, had to serve their community for a required period of time, and then they went back to their public life, their private life. But they had to do it because they were supposed to help the people of their communities. That's just the way it worked. So look, I just wanna say one quick thing, or not one quick thing, but, so right now, there's a lot of speculation about Hillary Clinton's health. There was a report released uh, yesterday, or late last night, uh, that said she had died. Um, it's clearly not the case to the best of our knowledge right now, but she hasn't appeared anywhere. We haven't heard her after she came out of her daughter's apartment and said something before she went back inside. We haven't seen her since then. I do believe her health is deteriorating dramatically. I believe that she either has uh, Parkinson's that's advancing uh, aggressively or that she has some kind of a tumor or something because she did have a tumor. It was established that back in 2012 she had a tumor and spent about a year in the hospital. It's been proven. Um, her actions yesterday, I do believe, suggest that she had a seizure of some kind or a collapse at the very least. Um, so I do think she's in bad health. I do believe that within the next two weeks before the uh, debates begin, this is my belief based on what I've heard and my agreeing with other people who've already said this, I do believe that she will leave. I think she will sign for health um, and that uh, she's just not as prepared to take over and take care of this. Or we may find something even more dramatic. Um, it's possible that they could use an assassination to say she was eliminated and then try to draw it back to Trump. These are all possibilities. Bottom line, I don't believe she's going to make it to the election because of one of these stories. And then most likely Joe Biden will be put in. But there's a very high likelihood that the election it could be postponed. And if that happens and the Electoral College gets to choose instead of a general election like we're supposed to have, I think we should be very, very worried as people. Do I know what's going to happen? No. But I do believe there is Hillary Clinton's condition is deteriorating enough to where there's a very high likelihood that she will be gone before the debates begin. But I don't believe she can handle the debates. I believe it would just be too much for her physically, and I think they know it. There's rumors that the DNC is meeting to discuss ways of pulling her out, and she could be gone within the next week or two. Uh, I do believe she'll be gone before the debates. At that point, I think there will be a postponing of the election. They'll attempt to do that. I don't think that that's relevant. I think that they've already known her circumstance. I don't think it's a shock to them. I don't think she was hiding it. I think they already know about it. But I think they'll use it as a means to try and um, displace the election. So push it back and try to, to postpone it. I hope as a people we can stop that from happening. Because once that occurs, they're going to try and put someone else in there. And they've already had plenty of time. They were just paying a due to her. And she just physically couldn't handle it anymore. The obvious answer is to push McCain up, put someone underneath him, or push Kane up and put someone underneath him as the VP, but that's not gonna happen. I'm sure they'll try and put Joe Biden in, most likely, and um, it's possible the Electoral College could try to place someone as the president without ever having an election. If that occurs, we're done. We really are done as a country, because that means no longer do the people make the decision. They let people who they chose make the decision, and we simply are no longer a voice. We're subjects. We're back where we used to be. 200, um, 200 and 
60, uh, 240 years ago, 250, I can't do math in my head right now, 1776, 24, 24, 40, 240 years ago. And it's so funny because I was, I've been rewriting something called the, um, the updated American address. Okay, so the answer, ha ha ha, end of it, Gilligan's Island. In the pile of Gilligan's Island towards the end, um, when the ship is setting out for the cruise, in the background, you can see a, um, a flag at half mast, and it's because the pilot finished shooting on November 22nd, 1963. The day that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great, great day. Don't think about negative stuff, but just remember knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And this is how we move forward and gain strength and come together as a country. Let's not let a narrative tear us apart. We're better than that. There will always be stupid people, but we don't have to be them. Eyes open, mind open most especially. Take care. Be well.